The July 18th, 2022 City of Andaya Council meeting is now called to order. We'll start with a moment of reflection, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Please stand for the pledge. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Your Honor, I'd make, like to make a motion to amend this evening's agenda under action items to add the appointment of Dave Arnold to the Planning Commission. Okay. Second. Do we need a roll call, Jerry? Uh, no, since this is procedural, just a... Um, All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. All right, Council, you've had a, a moment to review the council, council study session minutes of January 20th and the council meeting minutes of January 20th. Are there any comments or questions? June 20th. I'm sorry, June. Any comments or questions? Being none, they stand approved. And that brings us to communications, petitions, and awards. And first off, we have a proclamation to uh, designate July as Parks and Recreation Month. So we will do a proclamation right here at the podium. Clark. Okay, uh, we have no public hearing and that brings us to comments from interested citizens. So if someone would like to make a comment, please step to the podium, state your name and address for the record and your comment. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name's John Workman, 1024 Londonderry Drive. Um, I think the question, um, regarding the question of the hour, if you will, um, is not so much can this be done but should this be done should we infringe upon should we severely infringe upon the way of life and the well-being of so many folks in my neighborhood along along Halifax along Castle to put in a warehouse that's basically what this is can it be done of course you know it's already zoned for it that doesn't need to change um, according to um, uh, to these folks 
IEX has said, yeah, we'll sell it to you, but only if you do what we tell you, we can you do with it. And you know that that sounds a little strange to me, but I don't know. Maybe they did do that. So can it be done? Sure. Won't take much effort. You guys just vote yeah, and it gets done. But should it be done? What no one's really brought up and uh, made me think about it when we were doing the Pledge to Allegiance. I was thinking, I haven't done that you know, on a regular basis since I was in elementary school at Demet. Demet Elementary doesn't have air conditioning. Um, windows are always open when it's warm out. Get a nice breeze going through. Um, should we uh, have our children going to Demet constantly hearing beep, beep, beep when they're trying to learn? I don't know, should we? Should the folks that live on Halifax that have, I, I was always jealous of the folks that lived on Halifax because their backyards had that nice woods. You know, and they always had the, you know, always telling me they saw deer all the time. Uh, they were always happy with that. Should we take away that happiness for a warehouse? Some of the pluses for a warehouse, oh, it'll bring jobs. Plenty of places in Vandalia are hiring right now. <laughs> they, they, need to, you know, they need jobs too, you know? Um, uh, my daughter used to work out at uh, Chewy. They were always hiring. They couldn't keep people there. You know, high turnover. It's part of the, part of the, the gig for that. Um, so it's not like we're hurting for jobs. All right. Should this be done? All right. Um, I know I vote no, and uh, I think a lot of my neighbors feel the same way. You know, we, 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 we don't think this should be done. Um, can the property be um, rezoned? That can be done. Should that be done? Ah, I think you'll get some smiles from folks for that. Um, one question I do have to ask uh, personally, though, Mayor, um, I know that you have a, a background in real estate, so you're very knowledgeable about those things, um, much more than I am, okay? If a home, if you had two identical homes where one had a yard that was backed up into a nice woods in a nice quiet neighborhood, we got a pretty quiet neighborhood right now, um, always has been, and you had the same house with their backyard, even though they're you know, a screenage of trees. Beep, 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 24 seven. As a real estate person, Mr. Mayor, which one do you think you'd be able to sell quicker? Which one do you think you'd be able to sell for a higher price? And the obvious answer is the one that has the park-like setting. Yes, so. Should this be done or can it be done? Yeah, it can be done. Should it be done? I don't think so. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> My name is Carol Lutz. I live at 475 Halifax Drive. Thank you, City Council, for listening to me. I hope you hear me. Our house is on the edge of the woods on Halifax Drive. Think about this as if you live in my house. Think about 246 trucks leaving their truck engines running for over 30 minutes at a time. Consider that noise, but more importantly, that pollution just 400 feet from your yard, from your bedroom window, from your outside comfort zone. That is what we will have to live with if you vote yes to allow warehouses to be built in the Northwoods area. We have lived on Halifax Drive for 36 years, a resident of Vandalia for 55 years. We want to continue to live on Halifax Drive. Be truthful and ask yourself, would you want you or your parents to live with that air pollution? that noise, those lights 24 hours a day.
please do not allow the warehouses to be built in the Northwoods area. Change things to build homes or offices in the Northwoods area. Remember, you represent us, the citizens of Vandalia. Please act like you care about living in Vandalia. My name, my name is Leslie Madden. I live at 405. Leslie, Leslie, we're all friends. If you I don't know. have to get upset. I'm not upset <laughs> for me. Okay. Come on. Come on, I am. Let's be real. I'm upset for me. I live there on Halifax. I'm sorry. No, you can't. No. I'm upset because questions of my children. One of my daughter, who's 10 looked at me and said, Mom, where are all the animals going to live? Where are all the birds that you feed going to live? This is a child who, for her school, wanted to go and pick up trash on her school property to clean it up so more animals and wildlife could populate that pond. And she did, and she was, we had ducks that started to live there, different frogs and toads that started to live there, and now her school utilizes it for part of the science, or the plans are for this coming year to utilize it for science. My son, who is seven, has asthma. I myself have a heart condition. And if we're going to talk about statistics, no, there are not any neighborhood studies that will tell you the horrible effects that diesel exhaust and soot have on the body, but there are lab studies that show that diesel will break down on a cellular level people's DNA. It does cause cancer, not only lung cancer, but stomach and blood cancers, including childhood leukemia. I also did some research um, diesel on the effects of vegetation with the little amount of trees that they say they're going to plan to leave there it does over time kill off deciduous plants and vegetation which are critical for any and, and I also asked I spoke with Jason with the regional migratory bird division of the Department of Interior in regards to federally protected birds he says if they were to lose that habitat on any level, in, including air pollution, they will not live there anymore. Ever again, they will not come back and populate. A lot of them are federally protected, including the northern flicker, which I see on a regular basis in my backyard. I'm a bit of a bird nerd, and I thoroughly love woodpeckers, and the northern flicker is one of my favorites. And we are lucky to have them in our backyard, along with wood thrush, pileated woodpeckers, many different types of birds. So I'm gonna ask you guys a question, because my daughter does not understand. <laughs> what is more important to you? The lives of the people that live here, this town, or a giant warehouse at some point you need to think about who Vandalia is and what it is and what it stands for and I guarantee you it is not a warehouse it is the citizens that make this town Vandalia so please reflect on questions from a child what is the best decision for the people and the wildlife that I know Vandalia loves and values. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Elizabeth Langford and I live at 410 South Brown School Road in Vandalia. I grew up in Butler Township and graduated from Vandalia Butler High School. After getting married, I moved around to different states and have come to enjoy, for the most part, every place that I've lived in. However, I have always wanted to return to the roots of when, where I grew up, and understandably so, and have done just that. Not only did I grow up here, but so did my mom, my grandparents, and my great-grandparents. There's much to be said for one's heritage. The connection to a place that runs deep, not just in family, friends, school, work, but to the very heritage of the land, the dirt that has been farmland, parks, rivers, and streams. If you understand the heart connection that Native Americans have for the land, if you understand the heart that a farmer has for his fields, if you understand the passion outdoorsmen and women have for wildlife and nature, then surely you can understand the strong and deep feelings that so many residents of Vandalia Butler Township have, even those that are living in the surrounding areas. Certainly you were not blind, deaf, or dumb to the frustration and other hard feelings residents have had since the building of warehouses on the Dayton Airport property. This is ju not just about feelings either. The negative ramifications will also include property deprecation and light pollution, noise complaints, water issues, displacement of wildlife, vehicular accidents, will rise. Additional calls upon our police and fire departments as if they are not already strained. For the company to say they will go down 20 feet, which is what I've heard before from others, and I think that was illustrated with their drawings, to help alleviate some of these issues may seem like a swell idea, but will only cause problems with the quality of drinking water for the area residents. And as for um, 20 feet down to lower the light issues, tell that to the migratory birds and residential nocturnal birds and bats. I request that this proposal receive a no from every council member when it is voted on. I will add that all residents will be watching to see the vote outcome and as it is legally required that the public has access to know how each vote will be given, citizens will not only take that into account when it comes to re-election, but additionally understand the tools that they have, the citizens have, at their disposal. After all, you were voted in for these positions, which are to represent the desires of the citizens, and the citizens recently do not want any new warehouses, period. Thank you. My name is Laurel Wade. I live, it's kind of funny because when you look at this picture, my house doesn't exist because the line is on it. <laughs> so I live at Brown School Road at the very end next to the park. Um, I wrote a letter to you all. My grandparents were Joe and Bev Gatton from the city. And um, I actually have the same problem she does. <laughs> that my daughter doesn't understand either. I mean, she would have been with me tonight, but she's at her dad's. Um, you know, I have, I went to Florida at the beginning of June and I had, my boyfriend sent me a picture. There was nine wild turkeys on Brown School walking into the park. And we have numerous deer, numerous, numerous animals. I mean, you know that. But my concern isn't just that. My concern is the park. You have no idea how many families use that park every day. I actually get mad because instead of using the park, Parking lot, they park in front of my house. But people, lots of people use it. Everybody uses it. Everybody walks their dogs. People have picnics in the park right there where there's no, where the trees are. I actually threw my daughter's, my, or not my daughter's, but my niece's um, baby shower in that park with a tent. Nobody's gonna do that anymore. That park will be, not be used. It won't be used at all. And then we'll just, we'll just take more drug addicts and everybody else from Miller Lane. We'll throw them up to Northwoods too. We're going to put them up there because 
you know, we'll just have them go up to the RTA and they'll just start begging up there. And then the little woods that are gonna be left, they'll just go ahead and start camping out in there too. That's where they're gonna start living. And I won't live there anymore, I will move. I will, I will move and I will move out of Vandalia. And it's sad because I grew up here. I have lived here my whole life. I moved here, I shouldn't say whole life, I moved here in 1994 from Los Angeles, California. You have no idea how big of a difference that was. I couldn't go anywhere, I couldn't ride my bike. I had, I remember to this day, a man following me. I could have been kidnapped at the, when I was in second grade. My daughter goes to that park right now. A bunch of kids go to that park and ride their bikes. And now we're gonna have to deal with truckers, lots of truckers that I'm not gonna be okay with. I'm not gonna be okay with. Yeah, there's gonna be some areas between there, but it's not enough. It's not enough. I just hope that you guys just put yourselves in our position. Put yourself in my house and everybody on Halifax. Put yourself in our houses. How would you feel? I hope that you guys deny this and think about us. Thank you. So my name is Tyler Slauson, uh, 1148 Londonderry. So we face Halifax, so our front door is basically looking right at that tree line. So every morning if we got up, so if this was approved, we would see that. So my background, I work for XPO Logistics as a service center manager, terminal manager. I also built a distribution center for Belden down in Nogales, Arizona. So I have 20 years of logistics experience in the military Air Force. I retired of that as well. So let's talk logistics. If you approve this, this area is destroyed, okay? Logistically. It's a nightmare. Taking those trucks from these warehouses, oh my gosh, it'd be amazing. Uh, it'd be a congestion from like you'd never seen before, okay? So I'm begging you, do not put these here. This, this area cannot handle it, okay? Please, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Mark Fernelius, 1232 Bramley Court. I previously sent some pictures to Ms. Schwartz and Ms. Holloway about some ramps in the Copperfield neighborhood. Recently, they had become quite degraded and the, the city had helped replace those ramps and put in some new ramps to correct the uneven pavement. And so I just wanted to come and say thanks to everybody who had helped, without, helped out with that at the city. I'm, I'm sure there were many people involved, so please pass along my thanks. And then, again, they've got the pictures for your reference later. So thank you very much. Thank you. Clay Amos, I reside at 17 Sunderland Drive. Um, I'd like to thank the council for letting us all come out here and give, us, give you guys an earful. I'm sure you guys are appreciative of that. <clears throat> I want to further on the warehouses. I'd, Aside from the other valid points the residents have made, there's a slew of cultural resources in the area that just, quite frankly, are gonna be wiped out. The plans are for a 20, for a 20 foot divot into the ground to lower the, to lower the eye level of this warehouse, if I remember the plans correctly. The, fa the facts of the matter is, a lot of people define archeology span and cultural resources as arrowheads and spear points and all that stuff. There's a lot more than that. There's pit features, there's graves. All of these things are concerns of mine if we're, f because according to local collectors, there have been projectile points, knives, and even some animal bones that have been found in this field. Now, in these conversations with local collectors, I have not had the chance to closely examine these animal bones but typically these are indicative of something major that could be being missed. <clears throat> Over the past two summers, 
I've excavated three separate homesteads <clears throat> under the direction of Dr. Lance Green of Wright State University. <clears throat> the effects of just a, sim of a simple park being placed near historic and prehistoric properties, it's incredibly damaging to the point that we had archaeological debris freely floating on the trails at the Stevens Cabin site, that is 33MY969, for those of you that follow state seriation. Um, there was litter, all, there was debris from the homestead all over the trails. Now I can't imagine the sort of damage that a warehouse would be doing to that, would be doing to that potential site. Or perhaps any sort of dwell any sort of Native American dwellings because we've already proven that there is a strong presence in that area. Now, I don't want to mince words here. The vote against this should be an emphatic no from every single one of you. This cannot proceed. It is obvious that from all angles, including the areas that I've con including the areas I've worked in, and the areas that everybody else in this room has worked in, that it's just not an appropriate use for this land. Thank you, Council. Anyone else would like to make a comment? Hello, Council. Um, Dave Arnold, 462 Meadowview Court. I just want to say thank you tonight uh, to all of you for approving me uh, as an appointment on the Planning Commission for the future. It has been an absolute pleasure to serve on the Board of Zoning Appeals for the last three years. Uh, of course, you guys know reading the minutes that I'm the solar panel czar on there, if nothing else, with all of my comments. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to say is that we have a lot of openings on some of our commissions, uh, Planning Commission, Board of Zoning Appeals, with this large audience tonight. Um, I encourage all of you, go online, fill out an application, find something that you're interested in. There's a, there's a position still open on the Planning Commission. You'll get to serve with me. Big deal. <laughs> um, the Board of Zoning Appeals does some incredible work. We have, let me see here, the other uh, commissions, the Arts Council, working with Candace. Uh, the Bicycle Committee, don't know much about that. Uh, the Golf Advisory Board, surely there's a golfer in here somewhere. And um, the Housing Code, Board of Appeals. You know, it's, I have served in some capacity here and when I was growing up over in Inglewood. Um, it's important to be involved in the community. And I encourage, instead of just coming to a meeting like this, when it affects you, Get involved so you're part of the, the, the solution and the long-term outlooks for this city. So that's all I got to say. Thanks, guys. Thank you. My name is Wes Armstrong. I look, live at the corner of Frost Road and Old Springfield. I'm the last city uh, property in the city of Vandalia. And I have lived here since 1974. So I was here and working for the city when all this stuff in Northwoods was established and approved. It was done with planning for office, retail space, that kind of stuff. It was not established as a warehousing area. So I know specifically the city did not run Northwoods all the way through to North Castle Road even at that time because of concerns about traffic. I live on Old Springfield. There are not supposed to be any trucks, semi-trucks, up and down Old Springfield Road or North Castle, but they are continuously, including FedEx with tandem trailers, up and down Old Springfield, north on Frost Road, and they continue uh, over into Huber Heights on Old Springfield Road. If we can't control them, how do we control 365 trucks a day? Because FedEx doesn't move anywhere near that much freight, but we can't even keep FedEx off those back roads. 
everybody in here knows those roads are not made for that kind of vehicular travel. They're barely two lanes wide. There is no wide berm. For some reason, everybody has stopped maintaining the right of way. If you go to an intersection where there's a three way, like Brown School and National, if you go to that intersection, there's a really nice landscaped area where you make the right turn, <coughs> excuse me, to go south on Brown School. It's landscaped, it's, it's really nice. If you go to my house and look out the front door, there's a gravel slot with a big sign with an arrow that points to the right. The ditch lines aren't maintained, the drainage isn't maintained and hasn't been for 40 years. I came in and got a building permit to build a building on my property and the building department didn't even realize that I lived in the city. <laughs> I've been in this city for 40 years, but they don't know I exist. So everybody needs to understand that those of us who live on the, I've always lived on the east side of town, first South Brown School, then on Halifax, I bought the property where we've lived since 1979 at Frost and Old Springfield. It's a beautiful area. I've seen the Kroger go in. I saw a beautiful waterfall, attractive when Kroger's was built. I don't know what happened to it. Now it's a pile of weeds. It's not been maintained. And I assume that happened when CSX kind of lost some funding. But nobody's maintained it. Not now, people who, who come recently don't even know that ever existed. But there used to be a waterfall there. It used to be extremely attractive. Kids used to fish in that pond. Pond's not existing either. It was taken over by, by reeds because nobody maintained it. So, the only thing I want to say is that there is no way the infrastructure that exists in that area can, su can support that kind of vehicular traffic. The roads aren't wide enough. They're, they've just repaved the area in front of my house with a whole inch and a quarter with a blacktop. That's not going to hold up under tandem axle truck coming from, from uh, FedEx, much less a warehouse. So we can try to route traffic whatever way we want to try to route it, but unless there's somebody to force them to follow that direction, that's not going to happen. And as of this date, it doesn't happen. And like I say, there aren't 365 trucks a day in and out of there either. So other than that, I want to congratulate all of you. I think you guys do an excellent job. You always have, and I think you've always thought about the people and the people of the city. I just don't want leave people to lose sight of that over the dollar. I know that ground is set empty for a long time, and it would be really great to have the revenue from that. But I don't want to see warehouses there. I have no problem with it being developed the way it was planned to be developed 20 years ago. That never developed. I don't know why we expect this to work out any better. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. My name is Tommy Kettlehake. I live at 11180 North Castle Road, which is at the very top of this on the right. Um, my plea to y'all tonight is I'm tired of running. And it's what I mean by that is my wife and I, Cheryl, Cheryl and I, we grew up in Huber Heights. We married 31 years ago and we settled here in Vandalia. The reason we settled in Vandalia is because Huber Heights was growing so fast and there was so much traffic and so much going on. We said, let's settle in Vandalia and make that our home. So we've been here 31 years. 
25 of that behind the old Fulmer's Market on Greenhurst, driving a nice little brick ranch. But six years ago, we realized our dream because that area over there by Greenhurst was getting so busy, we had to run again. So we found a great property, three and a quarter acres out on North Castle Road that we dreamed of, you know, can we ever live out here one day, just one day. So we ran to North Castle Road six years ago and found our dream home on our dream piece of property. And this is where we're going to live forever now. And we don't want to run anymore. We keep running from all this development and all this traffic. And I would love to just stay where we're at and stop running from development. So I plead, please say no to this. Thank you. We're getting ready to close count or comments. Are we done? That'll do it for tonight. Thanks, everybody. Uh, say it's Jack Froshauer, advocate for the city. Uh, 11600 Castle Road. Before I start, I'd like to point out somebody to you. That's Phil Plummer back there, and that's our state rep. You don't get a, you don't get a state rep to come around often, so that must be a big deal. So that's pretty good. I called him. <laughs> Folks, I want to tell you something. I, I, uh, ten years ago was the first time I spoke to you, and uh, at the end of my remarks, I'm never going to forget this. Dave Lewis, uh, during the council remarks at the end of the meeting, said, Mr. Froshauer, that might be the most articulate thing we've ever heard here tonight. It was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but just to be certain, then Blakesley said the same. He was like, that's what I was going to say. So that's pretty impressive, and here I am again. Ten years ago, the problem was the brainstorm of running a, a railroad, resurrecting the old railroad track, and running it through the country, running, running it across the interstate, making a tunnel out to P&G. I called ODOT, and even they thought it was the craziest thing they'd ever heard. But uh, we addressed it, and we stopped that one. And tonight, Jerry mentioned there was uh, five, six years ago, uh, another developer had looked at uh, that parcel, and uh, in that particular instance, uh, I was with Candy, Can Candace Forrest, uh, Mayor Setzer, uh, a guy named Kevin Sink, who used to be a, a detective in Butler, and uh, John Cruzy, and we met with the developer, we talked to him, uh, asked for a buffer and all those sort of things, and, 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 it, and the ask was so big that he decided he would just forego the plan. And that's been it. It's been nice and calm, no problems, but here we go again. And so we got the letter a couple weeks ago. Well, three weeks we've been messing around with this. Now I got a letter today. I can assure you, I can assure you, I'll be here every time in opposition. And so will all these people. But tonight I didn't even have to dream up anything real articulate. I didn't have to work on a, on a planned speech for you. Not a thing. All Because these people all did it for me. There's 110 people right here. I've seen you many times in your workshops, take an issue, really debate it, really work hard to make sure you got the right decision. Pretty easy tonight, isn't it? There's, your, there's the people that live in this city. They're telling you what they, you're obligated to represent them. Pretty easy. They told you how they want you to vote. my water <clears throat> got my water my name is Tom Grice address is 10 400 North Castle Road been a resident of Vandalia since Got married in 1985. Been on Castle Road since we built the house in 1991. I raised both of my kids here, to the Vandalia schools, attended Dimmit, the old Morton School, and then Betty Butler. I got great educations. Grew up in Kettering, moved here. My wife and her family were north. You always do what the wife says. 
But the deciding factor was that the schools here were comparable to what we'd expect, to what we wanted our children to have. So it's been a really good community. During my career, hinges get laid off. In the facility I worked at, a nuclear facility south of town, you probably have heard it, the mound, was shut down. I got a job in Maryland working for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I'm very familiar with the Dayton International Airport. Used to know much of the staff there by name. I'd fly out Sunday nights. Work long days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday night, I catch a flight back, so I'll be back here in Vandalia. Did that for just over 10 years. During that time, I had the opportunity. I had the opportunity to change my residence to Maryland because I spent as much time in Maryland as I did in Vandalia. And there was enough business travel that I could have declared either state my home. I chose Vandalia. Maryland doesn't have a, state, a city tax. They have state and county tax. They also have an extra 1% state tax for non-residents. So for the privilege of commuting for 10 years, and because of my dedication to this town, I had 3% sucked out of my salary. 2% for the city of Vandalia, 1% for Maryland. And it was worth it to call this my home. At the planning commission meeting, I dropped off a packet. I believe it was part of the minutes. And I believe those minutes and those packets were provided to the city council. Are you, are council members familiar with that? short four-page letter and the copies of all the documents that I, I submitted to support my points. That will save us a lot of time, probably about a half hour. I will not go through that in detail. However, I will hit the highlights. What's being proposed goes against the comprehensive plan. I know the comprehensive plan was updated in 2020. The annex, or I guess it's the appendix to the comprehensive plan that was done in 2020, 2011, directly addressed the North Castle Road area. And it specifically referred to the area as having a country atmosphere, a rural atmosphere, a sense to that. And I understand that it's not zoned that. I understand, I understand that, that legally it is zoned Industrial and office internet office uh, industrial park. And I understand the zoning is law. And the comprehensive plan is policy. There are some indications in court cases where the comprehensive plan for a city has been interpreted to have nearly the same impact as law. I haven't researched that yet. I just came across it, across it late this afternoon. But it was from a conference up in Cleveland a couple years ago. Dealt with cities in Ohio. Found out that zoning this way is known as Euclidean zoning for Euclid, Ohio. Apparently it was the first city in the state or in the country to practice that type of zoning. A little bit of history for you. This also goes against precedent that was previously set, previously set by council. Jack was kind enough to allude to the capstone project where he tried to put in two plastics manufacturing facilities on the north end that is zoned industrial. Um, that didn't go, um, didn't go in. I understand that. There is the <coughs> Cedar Cliff uh, development that is my neighbors that original parcel was intended to be divided up into nine 
properties. There's supposed to be three in back and a cul-de-sac with six. At the time, council decided that having that cul-de-sac with the density of those homes being on roughly two acre lots, acre and a half lots, didn't fit the character of the community. Did not fit what was planned and envisioned as you drive down North Castle Road. There was a motion to recommend the, the withdrawal of that, that proposal. It was not seconded by another member, another member of council. I'm gonna need water. It was not seconded by another member of council. There was no motion, there was no vote. However, the owners of that, that property voluntarily withdrew that request, paid an engineering firm to redraw those plans. And now there are three properties in back and there are two properties in front. That was acceptable. It was acceptable to the residents up and down the road. It was acceptable to council. So I've, I've stated before, if a cul-de-sac with six houses isn't acceptable for that neighborhood, I, seriously doubt that a million square foot warehouse, let alone four million square foot warehouses. Something that no one's brought up tonight is the designation of Bee City and Tree City USA. I recommend you go back and look at the proclamations that were prepared when those awards were provided to the city. I wouldn't say that you're necessarily going to lose those certifications or those awards but if I look at this property I'll look at Northwoods over by uh, where the trees have already been demolished I think of the rezoning of the property west of Airport Access Road south of 40 east of Dog Lake 700 or 470 acres that I can only imagine is anticipated for warehouses. I don't know what's intended for the west side of Peters. I would envision those would be some type of manufacturing or warehouses. I don't know. I haven't been privy to that. I, like most of the citizens, have become complacent. We don't show up to these meetings. We don't pay attention anymore. The city council has for years years done what the citizens expected there's been no reason to question council there's been no reason to challenge the direction that the city's going I find myself in a position of needing to do that now getting sidetracked no, I'm not getting sidetracked, because my next point is it's contrary to the wishes and expectations of the citizens of the area. We expect more. We expect you to take our thoughts and considerations into, into account. Heard tonight from a financial report during the working meeting that the city is quite solvent. There isn't a need for additional revenues. I'm not suggesting that more money isn't good. I'm suggesting that there may be better ways to develop this to get those kinds of revenues. There's been limited discussion about the impact of wildlife. As you know, we started the Facebook group to oppose the warehouses. I would again like to thank Ambrose for holding the citizens meeting on Monday, going into that meeting, having, start, having had someone start that Facebook group about two and a half weeks earlier, <coughs> we were at 15 members. We're now at almost 300. We hit 290 during the meeting tonight. I could not have possibly spread the word and encouraged citizen involvement without their support. So for that, I thank you. There's been discussion of noise and light pollution. 
I'm not familiar with the phrase downward shining full cutoff lights. I heard they're required by zone. I heard they're going to comply with that. So I will challenge you tonight after council meeting's over and it's going to get dark. Take a drive down Northwoods. Take a drive down Deer Run. Look at the lights coming off of FedEx. I drove by there. Not as bad as they used to be. They've actually turned off some of their lights. Some of the lights that used to face east in the parking lot aren't lit anymore. Take a look at the medical manufacturing company that's down past Kroger. On the assumption that all of those lights meet the code as downward shining, full cutoff lights, probably inadequate. Probably inadequate. We've been talking about jobs. Somebody questioned why we would oppose jobs for a warehouse where people can make $40 an hour. And I'm here to tell you that Amazon has a distribution center and Walmart has a distribution center down in Mason. They're right behind the Cincinnati premium outlets. The job posting for those places say up to, up to $19 an hour. Now, I've learned a long time ago to listen to salespeople and be careful what they say. And I've listened to a lot of things that were said here. What I heard tonight was that CSX has a deed restriction, that it can't be used for anything other than commercial. But then what I heard was it's in the contract. So the question becomes, is it in the contract or is it in the deed? I'll be following up with the county to find out. My guess is this isn't, it's in the contract. And that makes sense. Ambrose is not in the habit of developing residential properties. If I was going to sell them property for development, I, would buy, I wouldn't have them develop residential. I'd go someplace else. If I wanted to build a warehouse, they're my people. Okay. There are wetlands that are on that property. There is wildlife on that property. There are ways to mitigate those impacts. There are resources that are going to have to be expended to extend utilities. There are ways to mitigate those impacts onto the city. I'm going to get controversial because things have changed over the years. We used to call people giving politicians in, in, in cities bribes. And now we call them partnerships. We call them offsets. We call them donations. You can make a donation to reestablish someplace else or to buy another piece of par another parcel of property that has similar characteristics and exchange them by ensuring that it won't be developed later. One of the facilities that I helped oversee at the NRC wanted to build a facility in Paducah, Kentucky. There were endangered species on there. But those endangered species lived someplace else in an unprotected area. And the bargain was, we'll buy an equivalent parcel of property over there put a legitimate deed restriction on there that nobody can ever develop it. So we have the same number of acres protecting the same kinds of species that we did before. I understand that rationale, but that does nothing for the citizens to live by the area that's being demolished. It's not even necessarily required to be in the same city or township or district. I ask you to consider the long-range plans for Vandalia. There's been a lot of discussion about what the expectations of, of, of the citizens are. 
my concern, not my only concern, but my concern as a citizen is what are we doing now that's going to be irreversible for the future if we decide that it's wrong? You're looking at impacts from one warehouse. We know there's going to be more. What are the, what are the long term impacts? We don't know. We don't know because they don't know. Okay? It's so early in the process, they don't know. It's, if it's that early in the process, it's too early in the process to make that decision and make that commitment. You heard the archaeological stuff. I know you're, I, <clears throat> you're going to run into the issue of once a warehouse is built on top of it, you're not going to find out if there was anything below it. It's going to be too late. So what do you envision the city of Vandalia to look like five years from now? Ten years from now, 50 years from now. What do you want Vandalia to be long term? That's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be brief. <laughs> Pat Rice, 10400 Castle Road. I drove home from New York today, and on the way, there's a very large uh, warehouse on the south side of 70, just um, east of Springfield. I don't know if anybody's been past there lately. I picture it being very, very, very much on the same scale and design as this. It is not a human proportion. You drive past it on the expressway, and you drive past it, and you drive past it. Those big bay doors that number the hundreds on a side are these little tiny dots as you drive past it. That's okay out in a bigger area. It doesn't seem that bad there. But you put that within a couple hundred feet of a house and it is, you're living in beside a skyscraper. You might as well be. If you look at the region and we're putting warehouse after warehouse after warehouse, we might as well have a city here. We're gonna have the same heat problems. Here are a lot of the other things they brought up. But ask any city, they have trouble with all these rooftops reflecting heat and it's hot. We're gonna have the same thing. We're gonna have acres, acres literally, many, many, many acres of you know, gravel tops. It's gonna heat this area. What happens with the chemicals of pollution under that increased heat? Where are the trees that have gone that may help mitigate some of that? They planted a couple in front of those warehouses. And they're pretty sad little specimens over there. They don't begin to compensate for it. The last thought is I was driving out of Kroger's. I'm like, there's no way this road can take multiple hundreds of trucks coming out of here. There's a really nice office building to the right as you're heading west, right there, you know, right across from Kroger's, and they've landscaped it pretty, you know. I think they may have already encroached on their property once or they took out some trees. In any case, there's two lanes, one way and one going the other. If they want to widen that again, you either are on their window, which if I bought that property, I wouldn't be happy about, or those few trees that are in that drainage area in front of Kroger's, they're history. But there's no way that road is going, to com is going to accommodate what you're describing with hundreds and hundreds of trucks. The bottom line is if this goes through, I didn't come to Vandalia to live in a city of warehouses. Will I leave immediately? Probably not. Will I leave eventually if, it, if that comes to pass? Maybe. Because it's not what I want. It's not what Vandalia presented to me. So I think even as a region beyond just Vandalia, we have to look at what's happening around, and it's not good. We're going to be the armpit warehouse of the Southwest Ohio. Might be a great business, but not a good place to live. I'm sorry, I apologize. Be short. Um, Mark and Judy Couch, residents at. 10440 North Castle Road are over in Europe on a pre planned trip and were unable to attend. They'd like to voice their <coughs> opposition as well. Yeah. And then finally, I, there is one thing that I omitted 
um, and it's related to the traffic issue. And that is consider that the ramps for Northwoods heading south, both the on-ramp and the off-ramp to 75, the merge lanes are the same merge lanes for the Vandalia exit. We already, already have lots of issues with people trying to cross lanes and merge in that area um, without the additional truck traffic. So that was just one other thing uh, that somebody had pointed out that I had promised but had forgotten to mention. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Don Hutch again, 105A Bristol. The gentleman was up earlier that was talking about <clears throat> people getting involved in the local boards. A lot to be said for that. Here tonight we are, we're reactive. People in the community need to start being proactive. In section 9-2.1 of the city charter, we have the ability to remand a zoning decision. I uh, challenge everybody to start getting more involved. I've been absent for a while due to other things. I've been in here on different issues. And uh, I've come to a lot of council meetings where you could hear an echo in here. There's nobody in the audience and maybe things like that. Nights, decisions on those days were when we lost our right to be able to control greater the land being given away in the manner that it is. We need to get one-fifth of all the electrical, the electors equal uh, signatures to get something to change this, to remand this zoning decision so it doesn't happen again in the future. We need to be more diligent and uh, come in and work with you guys. Um, we vote for you. We want you to stand up for our rights. But we also need to get more involved so we don't have to be proactive or just reactive because that's what we're doing tonight. We sit on our hands when we should have been in here making sure that our rights were being protected. And I get this feeling that the people who are making this decision feel offended because in the few meetings, the one with planning commission and the library, they act as if it's their right to come here and do this and all these challenges that we're going to have to put up with when it's our right. We're the ones with the rights here, not a small handful of people from the other side of the state line coming in here wanting to say this is our right. No, these are our rights to start being more involved and proactive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hutchison. All right, is there anyone else who would like to make a comment? I would, I'll be brief. Um, Dan Martin, 114430 Castle Road. I used to be at 11460 Castle Road, uh, moved in January. Um, a couple years ago, I had um, uh, my cousin lives over in Union, and uh, he does a lot of work on cars. In fact, he was just um, uh, hired by the city of Vandale. Uh, his name is Robert. He's the electrical inspector now. He used to work for the county. Anyway, I was over at his house, and he was working on my wife's car. Doing me and him were doing brakes on it, and it was an evening where this was probably th at least three years ago, maybe a little longer, uh, when just P and G was out there. I was coming home, I'd say it was 10, 10.30 at night, and it was a very, very foggy night. When I got across the river um, over off of Frederick, um, it just, I, I, I probably couldn't see you, Mayor, in front of me with my lights. It was so foggy. And I'm driving down the roads, and I've come that way many times, but I just kind of cut across. I don't even know what road I'm on half the time. I just cut back and forth. There's a couple zigzags to get back and forth over to, to there. And um, I kind of got puzzled, like, where am I at? And um, I started, started thinking, like, what road am I actually on? Am I going the right direction or not? Because it was so foggy. I mean, I, like I said, I could barely see in front of my car. And all of a sudden, it looked like Las Vegas in front of me. 
And what it was, I got thinking about, like, what in the world were, am I in a, I mean, I almost felt like I was at a couple, a couple months ago, I was out in Vegas. Me and my wife were out driving, went out to Hoover Dam and uh, went to, I forget what they call the Rocks of Fire or something like that. And we were coming back late in, late in the evening back into Vegas and we went with our neighbor. And um, the, on the way back, you know, driving into the city of Las Vegas from the, from the desert, that's what it reminded me of. The lights were just incredible. And it, I felt like I was like driving into the Wizard of Oz or something like, you know, and it was so incredibly bright. And then I could, dawned on me like, oh, that's P&G right there. And I mean, I couldn't see in front of my car, but you could see that probably a mile and a half away. So that's, that's just a small impact of what, and that's, that's, just, that's just when they were just building the one plant, when, the, when P&G was out there by themselves. I, I can't even imagine driving out there now, the lights and stuff that are, and, and I know that Phil, uh, lives out there and in the property value that he's he's faced with that the drop in you know all my cousin lived out there on Little York Road or uh, Dogleg Road he he foreclosed on his property he's like it's not worth anything he left they moved up to Tip City so I, I just want once again to I, first of all thank you again for listening to uh, all the fine citizens of Vandalia um, you can tell this is a community a community that cares about what happens here and I know you do too and I appreciate your time Thank you. Thank you. How y'all doing? My name is Tom Trick, 11,000 North Castle Road. We moved out there in 1961 before it was even Castle Road, so I've been out there a while. My house is one that has a creek running right under the road. And it hadn't been a whole lot talked about that, but we hear about all these studies that we're going to have, but we don't have any results of these studies. And you look at 25, 30 acres of building roof and blacktop, put a three inch rain on there, and you got probably a million and a half gallons of water going somewhere. I got a pretty good idea where it's going because I see it every time it rains. And it's a lot. And you add that much more to it because there's no place else for it to go. It's gonna be a whole lot. The, the creek can't handle it the way it is. With that added to it, it's gonna be rough. It'll probably end up having to redo the whole tunnel under the road. That'll be an expense that we'll end up paying for one way or another. Not very happy about that, but that's just the way it's gonna be. Um, I understand we have to have these studies, but I'd sure like to have some results and numbers of these studies and actually how many trucks and cars roughly per hour is gonna be up and down these roads. But I'm gonna tell you what, Northwood ain't gonna handle it. And I think before it's all said and done, you're gonna be widening that uh, overpass over the highway. It's, it's, it's going to be bad. My little brother works at one of the shops out there now in Northwoods, and quitting time comes around, and it's horrible. And we haven't even started bringing in warehouses yet. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Thank you for your time. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment? All right, but this time we're going to take a brief five-minute recess, and then we will resume here shortly with the uh, city manager's report. All right.
Yeah. Okay, if everyone could take their seats, we're gonna go ahead and get started again. Six more years. Six more. Not that I'm counting. No, I don't think so. Mr. Froshauer, that means you too. Don't think so. Take it easy. Thanks, Wes. You too. So we oh. I got oh, oh, no, you cannot. He said that in a meeting. He said that just yeah. I'd like to ask Mr. Froshauer to take a seat now. All right, this time we're going to move on to the city manager's report where we have uh, an information item and an action item. Mr. Wendt. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. I will uh, just give you two, uh, a couple of quick updates here. Um, one of them, you know, I'd like to congratulate Chief Aldhouse and the police division on an outstanding open house event along with uh, some of our firefighters and our custodial staff. It was a really good event for uh, all of the community to see the facility. Uh, as you know, uh, resident and police officer of Clear Creek Township, uh, Eric Ney, uh, was injured in the line of duty last week and just asked for prayers uh, for him and his family and, of course, all law enforcement and firefighters. Um, an update regarding US-40 paving due to the weather that will not start tonight from 8 o'clock till 6 a.m. That'll be postponed. Uh, it'll start Wednesday, uh, 7.20, and that'll go from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's paving the top course from airport access uh, out west. There will be an officer on scene to, uh, to control traffic and, and be there for uh, the security of that. Also, this Friday, we have an employee appreciation event. That's Pizza in the Park, 11.30 uh, to 1 p.m. on Friday at, Hel uh, at Helkey Park. And uh, one information item that is there, uh, council established a summer schedule for council meetings. Special meeting will be held Monday, August 1st, 5.15 p.m. Um, for BZA and planning commission items, followed by a city council meeting at 6.30 p.m. The next scheduled city council meeting will be Monday, August 15th at 7 p.m with the study session beginning at 5.30, the end. All right, we have an action item where uh, Councilman Follick uh, requested that we amend the agenda to appoint uh, Mr. Dave Arnold to the Planning Commission. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Lewis and a second by Councilman Blakesley to approve uh, the appointment of Dave Arnold to the Planning Commission. Are there any comments from Council? Call the roll. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Follick? Yes. Councilmember Farst? Yes. Councilmember Aethers? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbs? Yes, and the motion carries 7-0. We have no old business, and that brings us to our first resolution of the night, that being resolution 22-R-50. Mr. McDonald, by title only. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement to provide electric service to the Dog Leg Road Sanitary Sewer Lift Station with AES Ohio in the amount of $71,380.11. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Thank you very much, Your Honor. I testified on this earlier today uh, in the study session. This is part of the uh, utility extension over to Dog Leg Road. Um, it was included in the project scope. AES requires $71,380.11. Um, before work can begin, that is to put phase three electric uh, out for that sanitary lift station. Thank you. Can I have a motion? Your Honor, I'll move to approve resolution 22-R-50 as presented. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Follick and a second by Vice Mayor Lewis to approve resolution 22-R-50 as presented. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Woods. Yes. Thank you. Councilmember <laughs> Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Follick? Yes. Councilmember Farst? Yes. Councilmember Aethers? Yes. Yeah. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbst? 
Yes, and the motion carries 7 0. Next, we have resolution 22 R 51. Mr. McDonald? A resolution approving a financial contribution to the Vandalia Development Corporation. Mr. Wendt. Thank you, Your Honor. The requested funding will support a recent grant approval for Project Quarantine. The company anticipates creating 60 jobs in the city of Vandalia in the first 12 months of opening. The anticipated building construction cost will be $13,500,000 approximately, and this will be the company's Midwest headquarters. The city of Vandalia recently won an EDGE grant from Montgomery County in the amount of $150,000 to support this project as well. Thank you. Can I have a motion? Make a motion that we approve resolution 22R51. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Blakesley and a second by Councilman Ehlers to approve resolution 22R51. Are there any comments from Council? Call the roll. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Follick? Yes. Councilmember Farce? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbst? Yes. The motion carries 7 0. Next, we have resolution 22-R-52. A resolution approving the Vandalia Provision Living Section 1 plat. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Your Honor, the applicant, PVL Investments, has applied for a final plat for the 18.302 acres of land located at 3900 Park Center Drive, being lot three of the Redwood Vandalia preliminary plat. The Planning Commission voted 3-0 to zero to recommend approval of the final plat um, with one condition, which is listed. Thank you. Can I have a motion? Your Honor, I'll move to approve Resolution 22-R-52 with the condition of the Planning Commission. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Follick and a second by Councilwoman Farsh to approve Resolution 22-R-52 with the condition as noted. Any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Follick? Yes. Councilmember Farst? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbs? Yes, the motion carries 7 0. Next, we have resolution 22 R 53. A resolution establishing the One Ohio Opioid Settlement Fund. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Your Honor, the Auditor of State and Ohio Revised Code require that the city's share of the One Ohio funds be placed in a separate special revenue fund and used only for the approved purposes as required by the One Ohio Memorandum of Understanding. The new fund shall be maintained separately from all other city funds to account for the revenue and expenditures and the funds received will be used to promote an effective and meaningful method in abating the opioid epidemic effects in the city of Vandalia. The city's share is approximately $8,300 per year over an 18-year period. Thank you. Can I have a motion? Make a motion that we approve Resolution 22R53. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Blakesley and a second by Councilwoman Farce to approve Resolution 22-R-53. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Farce? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Follick? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbs? Yes, the motion carries 7-0. <clears throat> We have one ordinance in its first reading, that being Ordinance 22-29, uh, or 29, Mr. McDonald. An ordinance approving the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances and resolutions as part of the various component codes of the codified ordinances, providing for the adoption and publication of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances, and replacing ordinances and resolutions in conflict therewith. Thank you. Mr. Wendt? Your Honor, this is largely a matter of housekeeping and posting the appropriate ordinances in compliance with Ohio Revised Code. I'll let the law director's testimony stand. Thank you. Can I have a motion? Your Honor, move that we approve Ordinance C-2229 in its first reading. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Lewis and a second by Councilman Blakesley to approve Ordinance 22-29 in its first reading. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Follick? Yes. 
Council Member Fars? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbs? Yes, and the motion carries 7 0. Um, that brings us to ordinances in our second reading, the first one being Ordinance 22 13. Mr. McDonald? An ordinance approving a planned unit development, preliminary development plan, and associated zoning map change for Copperfield towns on the land, excuse me, on land generally located at 3330 Mulberry Road. Thank you. Mr. Wendt? Your Honor, the applicant, DDC Management, has applied for a planned unit development preliminary plan for a single 11-acre parcel located at 3330 Mulberry Road. The applicant is proposing to construct 87 owner-occupied attached townhome units in both two-unit buildings or three-unit configurations on the site with a density of eight units per acre. The Planning Commission voted four to one to recommend approval of the proposed preliminary planned unit development plan with the following conditions. One, Mulberry Road right-of-way is improved in accordance with City Code Section 1234.09F on responsibility for thoroughfare improvements east of their entrance to ensure the city has infrastructure in place for future development. Number two, Instead of mulberry right-of-way improvements made west of their entrance, a vegetative screen with a variety of evergreen trees along the access road ramp to better increase sound dampening for this community and surrounding areas. Thank you, and I believe uh, Vice Mayor Lewis has a couple of questions for clarification. Uh, just real quick, what, what have we done to, uh, because I think our concerns relative to this were uh, potential traffic issues. And while I don't think that the this specific development is going to generate those, but I hate the thought of it spurring additional development and not us being able to keep up with the, the road work, if you will. I, I, and I was kind of out of the loop, and I wondered where we were on that. Thank you very much, Your Honor, uh, Vice Mayor Lewis. Um, the if you if you were to look east down Mulberry Road, um, there's a significant curve as you travel that. One of the ideas was um, if the right of way had to be amplified, if it had to be uh, straightened, that there's an opportunity right now to uh, negotiate a purchase of the property that punches out and would extend to uh, Dixie Drive. Can we secure that option? That is actually under negotiation uh, with a purchase agreement pending. And so we, we opened that in uh, a public meeting and uh, council authorized me to negotiate that. And so we're continuing to negotiate it. Um, it from a planning standpoint, I think it's a very good move for the eventual improvement and then it's there's a potential that in that curve in mulberry that you know you'd redesignate that as old mulberry um and, and that's really just one part of the i think some of the concerns that we heard with this development but as far as thoroughfare planning i think that's an imp improvement for the future it, it begs the question is it prudent for us to approve this before we secure that or or vice versa. So if we go forward with this project or the authority to do so, and we don't have that, we're a little bit behind the eight ball. I, I never considered the acquisition of that property off of, you know, in question to be done as a response to this development it was for and, and the, fear, multi, the, yeah. the ultimate build out of multi-family or medium family medium density residential um, along Mulberry Road in the future so I mean I don't think time time and or the money to put that infrastructure in place is programmed out to and my, resolve this issue my fear is with the rapidity of what I've seen when some uh, building was initiated that it spurred quick development in the environs 
you know, contiguous that I'm, I was, I'm just voicing the, the fear that uh, this me might create the impetus for it to, and, and then we would be, we have the danger of being in a difficult position really to that lot, that's all. Okay. I somebody else had, anyone else have a comment? I just, are, you, are we in discussion yet? <laughs> I mean, we not, I, I just don't think we're ready. Uh, I, I don't see it as an inappropriate use of that land necessarily, but I think the ability to safely travel that um, direction and access to that property is, is not safe. Um, and I think we have that obligation to um, make that viable before we allow this much transit on that road. So. Did you have anything out, Mr. Wendt? No, Your Honor. Okay. No, I, I mean, we should open the, the public hearing really and hear from anybody before we, you know, have further discussion with council. Okay. All right. At the advice of our law director, we will now open up a public hearing. So if anyone would like to comment on this uh, particular ordinance, please step to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and your comment. Hi, Tom Grice, 10400 Castle Road. The more I do this, the better I get. I hope it doesn't become a habit. Um, I would... Uh, my ears were peaked when I heard the medium density residential. Please be careful you don't end up in a bind because some of that property between 70 and Mulberry would really look good with a warehouse to some people. So just be careful. You're, you're fighting one issue on Castle. You're going to probably be fighting more issues as the city prog progresses. Make sure you don't put yourself in the same bind in the future. Just something to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grice. Is there anyone else would like to make a comment? Uh, good evening, Council. John Bills, President of DDC Management here uh, as the applicant for it. Um, first off, just want to say thank you for the opportunity to come back before you um, and, and talk about this project. We are excited at the opportunity to be able to, to come into Vandalia and, and partner with uh, the city and try to move this project forward. Um, it's, we've been looking in the area for some time. We actually chose this location as we started to look for a project here because uh, it met the, the future land use. That's really why you know we looked to that. We didn't want to come uh, to a strong opposition. We wanted to try to come into a circumstance where we were meeting what the, the city had put out on record as for what they were looking for and really was our goal here. Anytime we go into a new city, we want to be a good neighbor and a good partner and try to deliver what the city's put out to the public that they want for a project. And we really feel like we've done that in this instance. Um, while it is, I think, just under eight units to the acre, you know, the, the medium density that I think the, the future land use does uh, show going on down through Mulberry um, is up to 12 units. So, you know, we're coming in just under two thirds of what the city had said they wanted for that area in, in the density for it. And, and we heard when we were um, at, at planning and zoning, each of the conditions that they recommended were willing to, to abide by and again, try to give the city what they've said that they wanted for there and we're more than willing to uh, cooperate and agree to those conditions if we were fortunate enough to move this project forward and then w we heard uh, loud and clear about the traffic at the last and that we were going to table it for 90 days to give staff a, a chance to take a look at that and and I think you know we heard a little bit of that tonight and it was we did the same on our side we we went back and we took a look at at least the preliminary data for the traffic on it and and the reality is, while there is some concern down the road, potentially, if there were other multifamily that goes in down there, we can understand um, the concern on down there. But for, for this instance, for what we're here for, it's 87 units. Um, when you look at the data, when we do the traffic counts for it, it's adding uh, 30 trips in the morning peak hour 
um, like in an hour period on there. It's a little over 400 in a 24 hour period, or between four and 500 in a 24 hour period. And in the afternoon, it's a peak of 39 per hour, which uh, for people like myself that aren't traffic experts, the, the result of that is it's negligible. Like the impact of this on the surrounding area um, does not have a, a negligible in, or a, any kind of significant impact to this project. I can't speak to other developments and what may or may not come forward to you in the future, but when you look at this, it, it is negligible uh, to the surrounding area. So um, when looking at it, you know, that traffic isn't even technically part of this, uh, part of the city zone ordinance in the process. That's something that would be discussed not at zoning, but at the, the future when we go through for final engineering and we'd work with staff like we would in any municipality and try to work through and make sure, but we're pretty confident in the numbers. I believe staff had given us some uh, similar feedback that the, the counts here really didn't warrant any issue from this one community. So I um, just urge you to take that into consideration while I, I respect the needing to plan for the future in that. Um, I, I think it is labeled for a thoroughfare down the road and the city can work toward that, but shouldn't impact uh, the property owner that owns it today and their ability to try to move forward with a project or our ability to come in and assist with that and do it. So we really just ask that you think about the, the good that it can do, uh, the fact that we're trying to work with you on all the items that have been brought to us to date. I think we've compromised and done, and hopefully uh, we can figure out how to move this project forward. We think it could be good for the community. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good evening, Mark Pernelius, 1232 Bramley Court. Just reminding the council of my previous concerns. First, the builder they've selected is not known for doing high quality builds and so I'm concerned about the long-term de deterioration of the properties, which will degrade the, the superior quality of, of Vendelia. Second, the Helke Hel Hel student population is a concern with these most likely attracting younger families and so planning for that. And then third, the future costs that the city might incur with roadways or uh, noise abatement barriers. And so I think at the very least, the developer should be required to put in a, a good berm to block noise from the 70 and as well as the off-ramp to the airport access road. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else would like to make a comment? Hi, good, uh, good evening. Um, Kyle Day, 512 Ashbury Farms Drive. Um, live really close to this um, and just wanted to go on ahead and voice my opposition to this uh, occurring. Don't know if the council or the planning commission ever considered possibly single family dwelling units versus multi family dwelling units, uh, but maybe an opportunity there. However, uh, I do have high concerns over not only the traffic, but the uh, also the other parts of the infrastructure, the electricity, the water, all that stuff that has to go in there, um, as well as uh, any other things that could cause complications with uh, new developments coming in there. Um, so just want to kind of voice, be a voice of my neighbors around me uh, that live in the neighborhood and hope the uh, council take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. And is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment? Being none, I'll close the public hearing. Yeah. Councilman uh, Follett? Yeah. So I just have a few things I don't want to belabor what a couple council members have already said. Um, but looking at our zoning code and, and the review criteria for PUDs, which this is a request, there are four areas that I think um, that I have concerns with, which is why I'll ultimately I'll be voting against the uh, request. But one is about the uh, section C, which reads in part, provides accessibility to public roads that are adequate to carry the traffic that shall be imposed upon them by the proposed development. And I think we've established that the existing road infrastructure is a township, a rural township road that has not been designed or intended to support medium density residential. It already serves as a secondary access point to two 
single family residential neighborhoods with over 200 homes. Um, approximately 1,100 feet of the existing roadway west of the proposed development to Peters Pike uh, is not under control of the city of Vandaya, which I'd prefer to see us control uh, that roadway before, before additional development along Mulberry, um, especially if we need that as an access point to residential developments. Uh, letter F of that section uh, sh says, shall include adequate open space, landscaping, screening, and other improvements. And as I brought up on the last time when this was in front of us, uh, I have a serious concern about sound mitigation um, affecting this neighborhood. Uh, I don't believe that the proposed evergreen trees along the access ramp or the water feature that's proposed in the retention pond is sufficient to mitigate the sound of vehicular traffic along the access road ramp. Um, especially, I mean, current conditions, but especially knowing what the build out of west of I-7, west of the airport access road is going to be with, with the commercial development out there, um, the vehicle traffic and, and semi-traffic <coughs> traveling that ramp access is only going to increase in the years ahead. And I think that if that is not mitigated as part of this development, which I know last time I asked the developer or the applicant, if they were with a sound barrier would be uh, um, opportunity or would they be willing to entertain the opportunity of a sound wall uh, it was a, a no because um, that that expense which based on estimates that have been given could be up to a quarter of a million dollars for the city in the future and I don't think that's something we should uh, straddle future council with um, the lastly my the last one is a uh, letter L um, well, actually letter K and the applicant just spoke to it um, I had done some basic math and I said about 500 cars a day um, in and out of that neighborhood, which, which his statement was, uh, I believe, 400, 500. Um, and even if half of those cars traveled through the Copperfield neighborhood, we're adding 200 to 250 cars going through an existing residential neighborhood because they choose to go straight at that access point versus east or west on Mulberry and cutting across to Stone Quarry. And I think that's something to be considered because um, that development or that neighborhood and the impact of that additional traffic in that neighborhood. And then lastly, I just, um, letter L, which is has buildings designed with sufficient architectural variety and exterior surface complexity, but include elements that serve to visually unify the development. And I don't, you know, looking at the proposed mock-up that they've provided, and that I know that this is somewhat subjective, but I don't consider the proposed um, product architecturally variety to contain architectural variety or an exterior surface complexity um, and then I just want to conclude by saying with all this it's not that I don't agree with the comprehensive plan and the intended use of that area I just don't think that this proposal uh, is in the best interest and meets all the criteria of the of the PUD uh, requirements in our code so, okay. thank you any other comments can I have a motion? Yes, Your Honor. I move that we approve Ordinance 22-13 in a second reading with conditions set forth. Second. I have a motion by Councilwoman Woods and a second by Councilman Ehlers to approve Ordinance 22-13 in its second reading with the conditions as noted. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Woods. Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Follett? No. Councilmember First? No. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? No. Mayor Herbs? No, and the motion fails four to three. Three to four. Three to four, three to four I'm sorry. <coughs> Next we have Ordinance 22-27. Uh, Mr. McDonald? An ordinance approving a planned unit development final plan for sub area A of the Redwood Vandalia development for land generally located at 3900 Park Center at Drive. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Your Honor, PVL, the applicant, PVL Investments, has submitted an application requesting a final planned unit development plan for property located in the southeast corner of Webster Street and Park Center Drive, specifically at 3900 Park Center Drive. The proposed final development plan is for lot three of the Redwood planned unit development. This 18.3 acre parcel 
is planned for a 71,500 square foot assisted living and memory care facility with 13 independent living villas. The Planning Commission voted 3-0 to zero to recommend approval of the final development plan with conditions. And I'll pull those up because I didn't write them in the blue letter. <coughs> And I've listed those on the screen. They're also specifically listed in the ordinance itself. Yes. Thank you. All right. Since this is an ordinance in its second reading, I'll open a public hearing. If anyone would like to comment on this particular ordinance, please step to the podium, state your name and address for the record and your comment. Being none, I'll close the public hearing. You have a motion? I move that we approve ordinance 22-27 in its second reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilwoman Barst and a second by Councilman Follick to approve Ordinance 22-27 in its second reading. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Follick? Yes. Councilmember Farst? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbs? Yes, the motion carries 7-0. Next, we have an emergency ordinance being Emergency Ordinance 22-28. Mr. McDonald? An ordinance approving individual assessment amounts and directing the finance director or her designee to certify the amounts to the county auditor for collection and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Your Honor, this emergency ordinance assesses properties for delinquent accounts related to stormwater fees, trash, trash collection, and delinquent sewer and water. Thank you. And since this is an emergency ordinance, I'll open a public hearing. If anyone would like to make a comment, please step to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and your comment. Being none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Your Honor, I'll move to approve Ordinance 22-28 as an emergency. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Follick and a second by Councilwoman Farce that we approve Ordinance 22-28 as an emergency. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Follick? Yes. Councilmember Farce? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbs? Yes, the motion carries 7-0. Next we have Emergency Ordinance 22-30. Mr. McDonald? An ordinance amending Vandalia Code Section 67802, carrying concealed weapons, and 67804, improperly handling of a firearm in a motor vehicle in order to be compliant with new state law and declaring an emergency. Mr. Wynn. Your Honor, the Ohio General Assembly and Governor DeWine enacted new legislation earlier this year that changed the Ohio Revised Code on carrying concealed weapons. Uh, that's RC 2923.12 and improper handling of a firearm in a motor vehicle, RC 2923.16. This legislation took effect on June 13th, 2022. Therefore, I propose the Vandalia codified ordinances in 678.02, carrying concealed weapons, and 678.04, improper handling of a firearm in a motor vehicle be revised to mirror the changes made in state law. Thank you. And since this is an emergency ordinance, I'll open a public hearing. If anyone would like to make a comment on emergency ordinance 22-30, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record and your comment. Being none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Your Honor, I'll move that we approve ordinance 22-30 as an emergency. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Lewis and a second by Councilman Blakesley to approve Emergency Ordinance 22-30. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Farst? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Follick? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbs? Yes. The motion carries 7-0. That brings us to reports from boards and commissions. We have the Civil Service Commission meeting minutes of March 29th, the Civil Service Commission meeting minutes of May 19th and the Civil Service Commission meeting minutes of June 30th. Are there any comments? Being none, they stand approved. And that brings us to the June listing in the amount of $2,034,523.28 and the list of June expenses over 50,000. We also have the June purchase card detail in the amount of $32,703.76.
And it brings us to council comments. We'll start with Mr. McDonald. Mr. Wynn. I'd just like to thank everybody for the good discourse. Um, I, I would say that being able to have that in a good and respectful manner is a great sign of a good republic and a very well-developed country, and I'm thankful for that. Thank you. Mr. Ehlers. Nothing, thank you. Councilman Pollock. Uh, just two things, since this is our last meeting before a retirement, I just wanted to congratulate uh, Brian Fox, uh, who is retiring from the city um, with 41 years of service at the end of the month and he's I know he's starting the service department I think he you know, right now he's in the parks and recreation department as our mechanic so congratulations to mr. Fox on his retirement and thank you for your four decades of service and then last just to thank the city manager uh, mr. knife um, councilman Farst and vice mayor Lewis and myself had the opportunity to um, visit the tri-cities wastewater treatment facility uh, last Friday um, and it's just um, it was interesting to see that operation mr. knife has a lot of excitement for treating of wastewater so um, that's good it's a acquired taste uh, not acquired taste acquired <laughs> skill <laughs> sorry strike that from the record <laughs> yeah. um, but I just think I mean to see that operation and more importantly to see um, the challenges that lie ahead of us uh, with some very large um, improvements at that pro at that uh, facility uh, to continue providing that service to not only our residents but the residents of Tip City and Huber Heights in that joint venture. So thank you for that opportunity to City Manager and Ms. Leiter and Mr. Cron. All right, thank you, uh, Councilwoman Farst. Just to um, copy on uh, Mr. Follix, uh, it was ex extremely interesting to go through that tour of the Tri-Cities Wastewater Treatment. I, I jokingly said, people said, what are you doing Friday morning? And I told them what I was doing. And I, afterward, I said, it really was interesting and exciting and very important that we see, as, as Mr. Follix said, um, all the challenges that are in front of us so that we, when the decision is made to uh, spend money in that direction, um, we can see how well it's warranted. So that's all today. Thank you. Councilman Blakesley. Yes, I echo that uh, Brian Fox will be definitely missed four decades. That's a long time. Uh, he's served the city well. And that just kind of segues me into the quality of the employees that we have in the city. And that uh, we can uh, appreciate the fact that anywhere in the city you're going to be safe uh, because there are two two incidences that were recently pointed out that uh, a fall at the Vandaya Rec Center and quick action by the staff jumped in uh, not professional but they have some first aid trainings just they just kind of went to their fellow citizen and, and helped out until the squad could get there and uh, just really proud of of everybody doing a job above and beyond. And uh, the same thing with Officer Blackfield, Blackford uh, responded and also identified and recognized the fact that uh, there was carbon monoxide and quick action called the fire department. And if it hadn't been, um, that person wouldn't been here today. So again, kudos to all the, those that serve and serve us well. And echo what uh, City Manager Wentz said about the Republic uh, really appreciate all the citizens coming out and voicing their opinion um, it, and it really makes a difference and and I appreciate others saying about getting involved and uh, that's what it's really about and um, it, when we said the pledge when you heard this room echo the pledge it just really hit you at that we are one and uh, despite our differences and our opinions uh, we are one and um, that's why I'm proud to be serving here. All right, thank you. Councilwoman Woods? Uh, yes, I just want to thank Chief Baldhouse and his um, department for supporting the Clear Creek Township officer who was wounded this past week and everything they did to try to support his family and his efforts uh, really says a lot for taking care of one of our residents. All right, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Lewis. <clears throat> um, it's all along the same lines, but I want to thank the, yeah, the citizens and our public 
Um, uh, we operate in a vacuum here about 85% of the time. And the more people, uh, our citizens, the public are involved <clears throat> in whatever we do, whether it's finances or zoning um, or exceptions to zoning, um, it's, you know, we value your input greatly. And many times we'll, we can disagree, but it's, uh, uh, as Mr. Wentz said, it's wonderful to have the opportunity to have some intellectual discourse and to agree, disagree or to agree. I fully believe that whatever it is, um, we will end ultimately end up with a better decision and a better way forward, uh, the more input um, that we receive. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, and that alone makes this a, a, a lot more worthwhile, although I could do without a three and a half hour meeting. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I uh, th thank everybody for their participation. All right, well, thank you. Uh, the only thing I wanted to mention is, uh, Mr. Went alluded to it earlier in the meeting as uh, he and I uh, had a conference call with uh, Congressman Turner's office Friday afternoon, late Friday afternoon. And um, it appears that we are in all likelihood going to get that $1.33 million to put into the ring road to start diverting more truck traffic away from Vandalia and get it on the backside of the airport. Um, I think what's most important about that $1.33 million is the money that the city of Vandalia taxpayers are not going to have to pay. Because if we didn't get an earmark like this, it would be on our backs to pay for it. So I appreciate uh, Mr. Went and his staff for being very proactive in going after this because it, uh, it will greatly improve the traffic situation in our area. And that's all I have. So after three and a half hours, this meeting is adjourned.